Alrighty, the house is... Oh man, I've been developing this for a while. Okay, so where do we begin? Um, basically, let's go ahead and look at it visually. This is a natal chart. Now, there's a couple of different layers going on here. It seems really complicated for people... You know, I mean, when I first saw it, it seemed extremely complicated, and people all the time are like, oh my god, how do you make sense of this? Really, it's it's not too difficult. It's just a couple of different layers that are coexisting. And what it all comes down to is actually, it's very, it's very visual. This is literally a picture of the solar system at the time of this person's birth. And, um, basically, the, the different placements, Sun and Leo, Mercury and whatever, all those different placements are one layer. If looking at our solar system from the top down, you're basically seeing the placements. And, um, or rather, if you're looking at our solar system from the, the vantage point of the Earth, from the, the top down, and that's basically what's going on. And so a natal chart, that's the circle, that's uh, the Earth, essentially. And all these different planets are impacting the Earth in a particular way. And so if you look up, to the, if you look up at the sky, you'd see, at the time of this person's birth, Mars here, Jupiter there, yada yada. So, that is one layer. Next layer the house system. And really there's only one other layer besides that, which is aspects, which is uh, understanding how this, for example, impacts that, or that impacts that. The different planetary placements impacting each other. But that's a whole other thing. The last layer, the one that we are talking about, is the house system. So, the house system is essentially understanding how the different planetary placements are impacting the Earth... H how to put it? Um from the vantage point of the Earth, at the most possible intimate vantage point you can from the Earth. What I mean by that is, yes, if looking down here from uh, a top-bottom view, yes, Saturn is going to be over there, Neptune and all that, but if you're on Earth, it, it's not only going to be impacting you from a certain region of space, it's also going to be impacting you through the Earth. Or, if, for example, um, to, to sum it all up, it's basically how the planets are impacting you from what angle you are on the Earth's surface. And so, at the time of this person's being born, um, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are all going to be on the underside. Again, this is a very visual thing. I know it may seem like abstract and like, oh, how do I understand it? What does this mean? But really, it's a very visual thing. This is, again, the Earth. And for this person, um, this is them standing right here. Looking up, you'd be able to see Mars. Again, looking up, you'll see the Moon, Mercury, Sun, Jupiter, and whatnot. That is going to be what is directly accessible to them. What basically is impacting them without any kind of Earth in the way. Whereas these different planets here are going to be impacting this person while going through the Earth. And so at the time this person is being born, all of these were in the sky, you could see them, well, I mean, you know, if you had a uh, telescope, you could see them. And underneath them uh, is <laughs> Earth, <laughs> space, and then those planets. So I hope that was kind of clarifying for what the house system is. Ah, now, how do we organize it? This is the real question here. There are a lot of different house systems. Um, Placidus is the most famous and most widely used in the West, as is uh, a couple of different variations on Placidus. They're not hugely different. Um, when I'm talking about different house systems, it's basically trying to figure out how to calculate how big is each house and what constitutes the house of Aries, the house of yada yada yada. And uh, so before we go back into the different house systems and a little tidbit on that, um... Let us explore what something, what that, the, the unifying details that all house systems have in common. So, off to the eastern horizon, right? Imagine in the east, setting in the west. Yeah. So, off on the eastern horizon is uh, the rising sun. And that is the, that is said to be the beginning of the first house, the first house of Aries. Now, whether we're talking about Vedic astrology, Indian astrology, which uh, uses the sidereal system and not the tropical system, which if you want to go into that, check out another one of my videos, Western and Vedic Astrology. Uh, whether you're using that system, you're using tropical, 
maybe even Chinese astrology. I'm not sure, actually. I, I haven't come across that in Chinese astrology. But basically, these house systems are all going to be the same. Eastern Horizon is the beginning of this house. And so, it's so interesting, really, because living in this reality, in our solar system, we have these 12 different primordial energies that the planets are, are impacting our circuits for, but it all comes down to the same 12 principles. You have Aries, you have this energy that starts a cycle, it's the beginning of a cycle, it's that infant in life, that brand new beginning, it moves on to Taurus, and so on and so forth, and every part of the cycle is important, it's crucial. It's the development, and this is what's so interesting and mysterious, is every part of the, the cycle has something that no other part has. They may have similarities, Aries and Leo may both be fire, very creative, very inspirational, very playful, very childlike, but they're going to be different parts of the cycle, they're going to be very different. And so, hence why we have people who may be of the same generation, maybe even of the same day. But they have different house placements, and so it, it changes a lot. For example, this person uh, has Moon in Taurus, in the house of Scorpio. That's going to be very, very different. Even though it's going to have its similarities, it's going to be very different from somebody who has Moon in Taurus in the house of Libra, for example. It's really amazing and very, again, very mysterious at how uh, 30 degrees from our perspective here on Earth impacts us so. And also the impact of the Earth as well. This person has Uranus, Neptune, Saturn, and uh, North Node. We'll get into that a whole other time. Um, in the fourth house, it's impacting them at the time of their birth. They were these planets were impacting this person not only from this region of space but through the Earth. Fascinating and uh, definitely worth the study. I'm always again. I'm very skeptical, and the house system. It's, uh, there's a lot of different systems used, and there's a lot of systems used that I don't necessarily see the logic for. For me, it makes very, uh, we'll go, we'll go into that, we'll go into that, into which system I, I prefer and, and whatnot. But one last little thing, so, this, these cosmic cycles, you know, we go through it with our seasons, we go through it with every single planet, from Aries to Pisces and back and forth, cycles is always continuing. Um... I've wondered, why is it that, why, why is that so? Why is it that we have the eastern horizon, why is it Aries? That's a, you know, what's the point? Why does it make sense? For me, the best way for me to understand it is, uh, well, first things first, I do think that there is something to the house system. I think that is an important part. Uh, it's, it's undeniable, really, that, I mean, it's incredibly different if you have a planet impacting you from this region of spirit, or rather... If the Earth is facing it, if you're facing it directly, or if it's on the other side, if you're facing away from it. I mean, that's, empirically speaking, that is a difference. There's going to be some kind of, there is a different uh, geographical influence, and so the question is, is there a psychological difference? Um, I'll leave that to you to decide, but for the last thousands of years, uh, astrologers have thought so, and I certainly agree. House placement is an incredibly important part of a chart to understand and it adds a whole nother layer to things and it can be kind of overwhelming at first but again I urge you if you are interested in studying this stuff please do and if you're interested in studying your own chart please do um, it seems perhaps unattainable with all these different layers going on but again it's really not that complicated and at the end of the day it's solid stuff even if, you know, the, the house system and how you measure it may be slightly different, we're still not talking about huge degrees of difference. So, the, for example, Placidus versus Koch versus uh, the Regiomontanus system and, and whatnot, there's not huge degrees of difference here. Um, there's a couple other house systems that are different. We'll get into that. But ultimately, this stuff is not that complicated. It really is just the understanding geographically from the vantage point of Earth exactly where the planets are and how they're impacting you. And again, with the planetary placement, we have what region of space. With the house system, we have basically where the Earth is in its rotation regarding these different planets. Because, man, it takes two hours for uh, the, the planet to rotate from one rising sign to another. And in that two hours, we can, we're can we talking about all of, I mean, the entire perspective of our solar system from the vantage point of Earth shifting. And so in two hours, not even in two hours, in a 
in 30 minutes, an hour even, everything is going to shift slightly, and that's going to impact us in very interesting, different ways. So, um, anyways, the reason, <laughs> so scattered, please, I hope you're following me. It's Virgo season, so I'm, my Gemini energy is like, Whoa. Um <clears throat> So, the reason why I think it, it begins here uh, with, with the cycle of Aries and why the houses are said to represent Aries, Taurus, Gemini, and so forth, is basically, yes, it, it does make sense that Aries would be the beginning of the cycle, certainly, of all the signs. It is the beginning of the cycle. It's the beginning of, the sp of spring. And uh, it's the beginning of new life here on Earth. And so it makes sense that it would be the beginning of the cycle. But what's most convincing for me, what makes the most sense for me, is the 4th house cusp and the 10th house cusp. And why that would represent Cancer and Capricorn. Now the 4th house cusp is the part of you, uh, rather the part uh, at the time of your birth, the energy that is directly below you on the other side of the Earth. So we're talking about deep roots here. Here's the Earth. Here we are, fourth house cusp. Can you, yeah, fourth house cusp is going to be on the other side of the earth. That, that is your root, and certainly I connect with uh, my fourth house cusp for sure. It, um, that's why it makes sense to me that again the first house would be this. Like, yeah, yeah, and uh, the tenth house being Capricorn, the exact opposite. So at the time of a person's birth, the the open space before them, Capricorn is said to be open space. Capricorn is said to be the sign in society, the sign of of people working together not inside the home, of work. And so, hence why the 10th house cusp is said to be very much about what's going on in the public eye. That makes a lot of sense to me and resonates with me deeply considering geographically what we're talking about here. How the cusp that represents your home life is the one that is directly below you going through the earth, deep, deep roots. And what's said to be more public, what's said to be more out there, is what is directly above you. And which makes perfect sense with, uh, with the cycle beginning in Aries and continuing on with. Another interesting thing uh, about this cusp, before we go into the cusp systems, is Aries starts a cycle just like it does with the seasons, and Libra is that midpoint. It represents a shift in focus. Whereas Aries was a me, 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 I'm going to grow and I'm going to yada, yada, I, I, I. Libra is we, and even sometimes you. It's much more, it's, it's, the, it's the equinox. It's the other time of the year when we have equal day and night, and that's very much Libra to balance out. And honestly, Aries too, their partner signs, they're not that different. But they're diff there's a couple key differences. Um, and so it's interesting that the seventh house cusp, the cusp of Libra, is said to represent who you're attracted to, who you are moving forward. For example, my rising sign, the first cusp of Aries, very much me, rising sign is said to be one of your three main energies, sun, moon, rising. No particular order, they're, they're different. Um, your rising sign, for example, mine is Leo, and so I very much am rising Leo, who I am. Long-haired, creative, uh, ostentatious sometimes, charismatic, a little self-centered, do my best, uh, very heart-centered individual. My descendant is Aquarius, and I very much resonate with that. I'm surrounded by Aquarius people. Um, granted, I have other stuff that really helps me resonate with Aquarians, but ultimately, this rising energy of Leo is a huge reason why I'm naturally geared towards Aquarius-type people. And, uh, mm, I, I love the house cusp. It's so interesting. It's always, I've always really enjoyed how there's this double layer going on, going back into the cusps of, you know, for example, Mars and Cancer in the house of, of Capricorn and whatnot. Um, so it's definitely worth studying. Okay, so the last, at least, you know, from my experience, my understanding, um, the last little bit I want to talk about is, okay, so... House houses. We kind of understand what it is now. Hopefully, we understand the general principles, the different houses. We didn't go too in depth. Uh, that'll be for a future video series, for each house and the different planets in each house. It's gonna take a long time, but be patient. I'll get there, as long as I keep moving, which I'm sure I will. Um, so, what house system works, or rather, what what works best? And of course. 
people are going to answer that very differently. <laughs> you ask an astrologer, well, for the most part, most Western astrologers use Placidus, but there's certainly a lot of different house systems that have been used for decades 